Hi guys, it's Chris with City Girl Homestead, and it's Fun Friday. So we're going to start out with the dessert, and then I'm going to read off the rest of those things that we had. I apologize if my videos have been short or whatever, it's just that my throat has been really sore, really hurting a lot. So I'm not talking as much, and obviously I'm stuffed. Right up in here, terrible. Now my oldest son has it. So, And then Bobby said today he thought the kids were coming down with it, so I'm like... I know, right? So today, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> what we're going to make, and I can't wait to taste it. So I'm going to make a dump cake, but not just any dump cake. We're going to make lemonade strawberry dump cake. How does that sound? Yeah. All right, so if you notice, I bought my son a metal pan because, well... Last week, almost I almost doubled everything over, almost, and I'm like, that ain't going to happen again. So I bought him a pan, and he could just bring it back. So now I'm using my own home canned strawberry pie filling. If you don't have your own, then you're going to use two cans um, of the 21-ounce cans from the store. So mine are 32 ounces. So I'm going to use one and a half per, per container. And mine isn't just, you know, the sauce that they have. I actually have strawberries in mine. Because I've noticed the ones that you buy at the store, it's a lot of the filling and not the, the fruit itself. You know what I mean? It just... I'm like, where's the fruit? <laughs> so I'm going to do both of ours up at the same time. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Definitely, guys. Definitely. Look at all those big pieces of strawberries in there. You don't find that at Walmart. <laughs> Alright, then we're going to use this third one here and divide it between the two. If I turn my opener around the right way, that would be a good start. We're going to put about half of it in Christopher's. The other half in mine. And maybe in a little while I won't be cooking for Christopher because he's looking at a place over by where he works. And that'll be about an hour from here. So, yeah. I'm glad to see him, you know, getting his own place after his divorce and everything. But an hour away? Come on. But he'll only be like five minutes from work. So that'll be a lot better. I'm glad for him, it doesn't, and I'm happy for him, doesn't mean, <laughs> I like him being so far away, and Courtney brought up that, you know, um, Nate is, you know, all the way in Tennessee, and I said, yeah, we don't like that any better, <laughs> all right, so I'm using the lemon cake mix, you can obviously do this with anyone you want, but it wouldn't be lemonade if you didn't have lemon cake mix, all right? So we're going to scatter that. I'll fix it up a little bit better here in just a second. Yes, we're having the same dinner tonight too because it's oh so good. At least I hope it is. Never made it before, so let's hope it is. I found out that his girlfriend absolutely loves, loves, loves strawberries. So, but I'm down to two frozen packages of strawberries in the freezer and three um, pie fillings left. That's it. So, we're getting down on our strawberries. And we can find them for 99 cents a piece, you know, right now, but... 
I'm not in the mood to can right now. <laughs> so, it'll have to wait. Alright, so now, I did three sticks of butter up. But I figured whatever I don't use, then I could put into my butter dish. So I'm going to put butter down on every bit of this. If I don't have enough butter, then I can cut some more. Problem solved, right? This is going to be delicious. I just know it. Lemon cake is my favorite to begin with. So... I love strawberries. I got something I'm going to be doing a demo on, I think, either tomorrow or Sunday. I'm pretty excited about it. I got three products coming up to do reviews on. I told Tom it seems like everything lately that we do a review on, it's stuff for guys. <laughs> Not that, yeah, well, anything could be for girls, too, I guess, but, yeah. So I'm pretty excited. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stick his in the oven. I have it at 350. It says 375, but I prefer 350 for just about everything I do. Unless it's got to be way up higher, you know what I mean? But that was a thick piece. And you're going to cook these for about 45 minutes. Maybe I won't have enough butter for mine. Go figure. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see here. Nope, I'm going to have to cut some for myself. Dang kids anyway. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to finish cutting up probably another half a stick of butter. I'll get it in the oven and I'll be back. Alright, so both cakes are in the oven and going. And that guy's doing the thing with his music again. I don't mind bumping music, but at least change the song something. I don't know. But anyways... So I'm going to finish up those 67 farm farming facts to cultivate your mind. And I haven't read them, so we're going to read them together. In 2007, just 187,816 of the 2.2 million farms in the United States accounted for 63% of sales of agricultural products, marketing, marking a trend towards the concentration of agricultural production. Wow, 63%, that's pretty cool. Agricultural efficiency has increased over the past century from 27.5 acres workers in 1890 to 740 acres per worker in 1990. So either we're getting better efficiency or they're overworking people. <laughs> um, seeds have, been, have to be scattered by hand until Jethro Tull's seed drill developed in 1701 made it possible to plant seeds in a row which would only which could then be easily hoed. I didn't know that either. I like learning with you guys. According to the UN, an exploding world population, intensive farm practices and changes to the climate have um, provided a breeding ground for unprecedented number of emergency diseases, emerging emerging diseases. Poultry farming, for example, may account for a global spread of bird flu. In fact, the majority of the 39 new diseases that have emerged just in one generation come from animals, including Ebola, SARS, and the bird flu. Today's farmers grow more food, feed, and fiber. They also grow crops that processed into fuel. 
For example, corn could be made into ethanol and soybean oil made into diesel fuel. Getting into the animal thing. Um, this is my just my opinion. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything else. But if they would stop messing with nature, you know, people read about the chemtrails and all the other stuff, and stop changing the weather patterns um, through man, and stop trying to modify our our crops and our animals through man's way, not God's way, we probably wouldn't have so many issues. Just a thought. Maybe I'm crazy. You can let me know below. Um, Robert Newman was banned from all farms in the United Kingdom in August of 2013 for having, oh, we don't even want to talk about it. something with a goat. Gross. Only 2.4% of the world's cropland is planted with cotton. It accounts for 24% and 11% of the global sales of insecticide and pesticides, respectfully. People living near factory farms often suffer from headaches, nausea, respiratory di distress due to the effects of um, factory um, pollution. Factory farms are those that pack hundreds and thousands, even millions of cows, pigs, chickens in the farms. In 2012, farms and ranches spent $329 billion to produce $388 billion in goods. Well, that's not much of a profit. But then again, there you go. You buy... I mean... I sound like such a conspiracy theorist, but... They pump so much into our animals and into our food that we really don't know what we're eating anymore. So, like, even though we know we're eating, like, more whole foods, are we really? I read in, a, in an article that if you see a nine before anything in your fruits and vegetables, don't buy it. It's not whatever they call it. Um, so, even your highfalutin fruit and vegetables that you buy that you think have nothing in it, that's not true. Not true. And you're paying a whole lot of money for the same crap. Owning and controlling a farm has historically been linked to status and power, especially in medieval European agrarian, agrar I don't know how to say it, societies. Farm ownership has also been historically linked to types of government, federalism, democracy. Control the food, control the people. Just saying. I know you guys are going to see this different part of me today, aren't you? <laughs> but it's true. If the government gets a hold of your food and they control it, you have to eat. So they have control of you. Just saying. The word farm is from Old French firm, meaning rent or lease, and the Latin firmare to fix, settle, confirm, and strengthen. The United States exported, exported $136 billion in farm goods in 2011 with a two thirty seven billion dollar trade surplus the word world population will jump from seven billion to nine billion by 20, 2050 farmers will need to double their food production by then to keep pace well not if we eat crickets <laughs> I'm being bad today I'm sorry but it is fun Friday so I can be weird too right <laughs> Livestock farming feeds billions of people and employs 1.3 billion people. That means one in five people on earth work in some aspect of livestock farming. For every dollar spent on food, farmers get less than 12 cents for the raw product. The phrase, fetch the farm, is a prisoner slang from at least 1879 from getting sent to the infirmary where there is a better diet and not much hard labor. <laughs> the phrase buy a farm is World War II slang meeting die or get killed. All right, let me blow my nose right back. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I hope Marsha, I don't keep it as long as she had it for a month because this stuff is horrible. When I get done, I'm going to say something and it probably won't be as fun, but that's okay. I hope anyway. <laughs> The Dust Bowl forced th tens of thousands of farmers known as Okies to leave their farms. The Dust Bowl exodus was the largest migration in American history. 
1830, it took 250 to 300 labor hours to put to produce 100 bushels of wheat, which is about five acres. In 1975, it only took three and a quarter hours. Innovations really brought it a long ways. In 1890 to 99, the average consumption of fertilizer was about 1,845,000 tons a year. In 80 to 89, it was 47 million tons per year. We're using a lot of fertilizer. In 1954, the number of tractors on farms surpassed the number of horses and mules for the first time. Henry A. Wallace was the Secretary of um, Agriculture from, and supported government intervention in farming practices. For example, he ordered slaughtering pigs and plowing up cotton fields in rural America to help increase the price of these commodities in order to help the economic situation of the American farmers. And you know they still do that today, right? There's farmers that they pay to not produce anything so that they can keep. And I do understand that to some degree because... Um, it keeps the trade better. Well, this last couple of years, they've went down even more to have even less produced. That I don't understand. Control the food. <laughs> Fritz Haber, Haber, I'm sorry, um, co-developed with Karl Bosch the process of ammonia synthesis, which is known today as Haber synthesis. While he, his work led to the production of nitrogen fertilizer which was has helped to feed billions of people. Um, he has also contributed hum, human destruction with his involvement in chemical agents during World War II. Just saying, World War One. sorry. <laughs> Just saying. Cyrus McCormick is considered the father of modern, modern agriculture. He invented the world's first mechanical reaper in 1831 which helped replace the manpower for the machine power up to harvest crops. His invention is also cited to the key in the westward expansion of the United States. Joe Anderson, a slave, also worked with McCormick to develop the mechanical reaper. That's awesome. Eli Whitney, invention of the cotton gin, catapulted the rise of cotton production in the Deep South, which some historians note led to the increase in slavery and contributed to slavery issues. Approximately 60% of farmers in the United States are 55 years or older. Aging farmers had led to the concern about long-term health of the family farms. You know, I don't know if I should say that to last, but there are some people that they have farming in their, in their DNA. And, I mean, you can just tell the ones that do. And some of the farmers I know have sent their kids to college to learn better things. Tom has a friend that he only had like three barns of cows that he would milk and when he wanted to retire he gave it to his son and he's up to like 10 barns I think now. So he had went to college to learn to do better things and the farm's bigger than it's ever been. But then there's those farmers that their kids didn't want anything to do with it and that's really sad because the, the farm ends and that's really sad honestly. That happened in my own family too. Most concerns of genetically modified crops fall into three categories. Environmental hazards, human health risks, and economic concerns. I'd say there's a few more, but other than that. <laughs> Monsanto Company is the leading producer of GE, which is genetically engineered seeds. Total global cropland amounts to roughly 1.5 billion hectares, generally modified organism, GMOs, make up more than 11% of the cropland in the world. Almost done! <laughs> Hopefully these weren't too boring. The United States, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, and India plant most of the GMO cropland. More than 152 million of the world's 170 GMO, million GMO hectares are found in these five countries. The four major biotech crops in 2012 were soybean, cotton, maize, and canola. Research suggests that the increased use of herbicide designed to work with GMOs and vice versa are starting to create the superweeds that resi resist chemicals. In 2012, 
17 million farmers in 28 countries planted 170 million hectares of the biotech crops. So, <laughs> this is not going to be part of the fun part of Friday. But anyways, when I read through those with you guys, because I did not read them in advance. Like, we are going to try to get our garden and most of it in this weekend, and then we'll probably do the... Um, tomatoes next weekend, Mother's Day weekend. If you have an opportunity, make sure that you buy, you know, heirloom seeds because a lot of those seeds that are, and the dollar store seeds are great. They're four for a buck. You know what I mean? That's a good deal. Try to buy heirloom seeds and, you know, our friend, she, Mountain Seeds, they sell everything that we've planted of her so far has sprouted out in the greenhouse. You know, look for heirloom seeds and save those heirloom seeds a lot of times we'll save seeds from the things from the um, store and those are just modified seeds so that we're saving and a lot of times they won't you know I haven't been too much into the seeds preservation but I mean to where I didn't plant anything with seeds this year we're gonna try to do everything from seed except for out front the two um, big things that we have we like better boy and big girl, big girl, bad boy. I don't know. But anyway, we want to plant the two up front with that. Everything else we're planting is from seed. Um, so that A, it's going to be cheaper and B, we want to see how it works. And we're doing more of an intentional planting this year. So um, there'll be more cucumbers because I need more like relish and Tom likes to take cucumbers to work and we don't need to can a lot of pickles, but certain peppers, whatever, um, we're doing intentional planning so that it's stuff that we know how to preserve, take care of, do for ourselves. Um, but if you have a chance even to just put herbs in a window, whatever it happens to be, plant as much of your own food as you possibly can. We use Jack's Yard. Um, our yard, first of all, doesn't get much light back there. Second of all, we have a lot of creatures that live back there. <laughs> we found that out when my son tried to have a garden. And they totally destroyed it. Um, unless we had money, obviously, to do fencing and stuff, which we don't. So, watch what you buy at the store. You know, wash off your products. Do that. Use as much as your family farmers as you possibly can. Um, and that doesn't go for just fruits and vegetables. That goes for your meat as well. That's something that Tom and I have been talking about. Saving up enough money to go to, at church, one of the um, people at church own their own little... I don't know, beef farm and uh, see how much it is to buy a side of beef or a quarter beef or whatever it is so that we know that it's you know a better meat and I think most times when you do that it ranges about 350 a pound which everything you buy in beef now is that and more so and you know what's in it and use your local your food markets you know um, go to your local farmers and try to get a lot more food that way we encourage Monsanto and all those other places when we u utilize all of their stuff. It's really sad what they do to the animals. It really is. Um, <laughs> I've watched movies on what they do, and it's really sad, and I think it's horrible. But we have a lot of people to feed. That's why they want to get rid of all the cows and the pigs and chickens and all this other stuff, and, and we all just eat crickets. <laughs> And if you look in some of your products now, this is why they say label watch. A lot of your products now already have some of those cricket things in them. I'm just saying, that's gross. I used to catch crickets and, and stuff for my grandpa to go fishing with. It wasn't for us to eat. That's for dang sure. But um, I hope you enjoy Fun Friday. You know, I don't know if it's something I'm going to keep doing. I don't know. Um... I have fun coming up with different ideas. And sometimes the fun facts aren't as fun as they should be. This one, it kind of really brought to light a lot of the things that we're going through. We can take care of ourselves, you guys. We can. We may always need to depend on the stores and whatever to supplement, do whatever we need to do. Of course. But I am a firm believer 
if you don't have money and food, then you're easily controlled because you're going to worry about how you take care of your family. And if we take some of that off the plate, and like the one lady told me a long time ago, whatever I plant takes away less from the store that someone else can get to. So plant what you can. Even like, I don't know why I can't make it work, but you know how you do the onions in the water and then it sprouts again, whatever? I've always failed. So <laughs> I don't know what my daughter-in-law does that I don't, but um, even if you do things like that, you can do it with celery and all different kinds of stuff. So, you know, do what you can do to help your family. And you know what? It's money savings. And in the summertime, you know, when everything's being, you know, um, everything's coming out and you can buy this and that and so much cheaper, buy it. Even if you don't know how to can or anything like that, buy it, put it in your freezer, dehydrate it. You know, some people are lucky and have one of those freeze dryers. I'm not one of them. I keep getting these scam calls. I don't know why, but anyway. So I will be back when that's done. I'm sorry, the video, I planned on it being a really quick one. Sorry. I will be back. Alrighty, so it's done. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? Alright. So now we don't have to do a quality test with his since I have my own. Look at how beautiful that is. Ooh, still warm. <laughs> if I had vanilla ice cream, could you imagine right now? Mm. Perfect. <laughs> that is so good, you guys. You taste that lemon with the um, strawberries. It is so good. You got to try it. So, thanks for being with me on Fun Friday. And, oh, that tastes good with a lemon. <laughs> I'm glad I did the lemon. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Have a blessed day. Be a blessing. And I'll see you for supper.